Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 5, the Jan 2022 POA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so for part A, with one mark, name one ratio which can be used to determine the business efficiency. Okay, so you know me, I would not, I don't like to just give you one answer. I want to give you as many as I can. So the ratios that can be used to measure the efficiency of the business are the rate of stock turnover, the receivables turnover or the receivables collection period, and the payables turnover or payables payment period. Now, there may be others, but at the CSEC level, as far as I'm concerned, these are the three you have to know. Now, of course, some textbooks and some teachers classify other ratios here that I might classify differently. So if you know of any other efficiency ratios that I don't have here, or if you can think of anything else that I may have missed, please put it in the comment section below so that we can share knowledge and learn from each other. Okay, let's check out part B. So it says that G and B Retail Limited provided you with the following list of balances which were taken from its books on 31st December 2021, the end of the financial year. So we have total current assets, net profit for the year, total current liabilities, inventory, capital at start. Now, what do they want us to do? It says, use the appropriate information from the table above to calculate each of the two ratios below. In each case, state the formula used and show all working clearly. The first ratio they want us to calculate is the asset test ratio, which is also known as the quick ratio. And they want us to show the formula and the working. Okay, so let's get to that. So the formula for the asset test ratio is current assets minus inventory over current liabilities. Now, again, according to how high you go in accounting and what syllabus you are learning, you may have a different formula. I have seen different formulas for this ratio, but for CSEC POA, this is a perfectly acceptable formula. So we have total current assets of 145.6. We have inventory of 102.944 and current liabilities of 49.6. So if we take a look at the working, we're seeing 145,600 minus 102,944, which is current assets minus the inventory divided by current liabilities. And that gives us 0.86 to one. Okay, so what that means is we only have $86 worth of current assets, excluding stock, to pay off every dollar of current liabilities. So we aren't liquid. We are actually in a kind of deficit position, all right? What about the next question? So what they want us to find here is the return on investment. And just like in the previous question, they want us to show the formula and the working. So let's scroll back up to take a look at the information. Okay, so for return on investment, we have to use net profit for the year over capital at start multiplied by 100 to express it as a percentage. So the net profit is 140, capital at start is 700. So that's what we're going to see here. 140 over 700 by 100 is 20%. Now, some textbooks and some teachers use average capital, which is opening capital plus closing capital divided by two. If you don't have closing capital, then you can't find average capital. One workaround for that that some people do is they let closing capital equal to zero, but I wouldn't advise that. So again, you can only use what they give you in the, inf um, the information they give you in the question, sorry. So I think that this should be fine. This should suffice. 140 divided by 700,000 multiplied by 100 is 20%. Okay, so we're back with GNB Retail Limited and they've provided the following additional information. Credit sales, 378,000. Credit purchases, 469,000. Account receivable, 37,256. And accounts payable, 45,000. And again, use the appropriate information from the table above to calculate each of the time periods below. In each case, state the formula used and show all working clearly. So the first item they want us to show is the receivables collection period. And of course, they want the formula and the working. Let's take a look at that. So the formula for the receivables collection period is 365 divided by credit sales divided by account receivable. So credit sales divided by account receivable is what we call the receivables turnover or the number of times per year our credit customers repay us. To turn that into a number of days that it takes to, for the customers to repay, we take 365 and divide it by that same ratio. So the credit sales was 378 and the account receivable was 37,256. So we're gonna plug those right inside of here 
and we see it takes just about 36 days for our customers to pay us back on average. So the next thing they want is the payables payment period and of course they want the formula and the working. So let's scroll back up to the information so we can use that to answer the question. Okay, so for the formula for the payables payment period is 365 divided by the credit purchases divided by accounts payable. So you can call this the creditors turnover and what credit purchases divided by accounts payable gives us is the number of times we repay our trade creditors within a given year. And to turn that into a number of days that we take to pay back the creditors, you take 365 and divide it by that turnover. Now, according to the information in the table here, credit purchases is 469 and accounts payable is 45,000. Plugging it into our working, we will get 35 days. So it, we, if we compare it to the receivables collection period, which is 36 days, we take almost the same time. We actually pay them back our creditors a little faster than we're collecting money from our debtors. So that's a little risky, but I think relatively negligible. Now, if you want to check out my ratios playlist, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check it out if you want to learn a bit more about ratios for CSEC theory. Now, let's take a look at the next part in the question. All right, so GNB Retail Limited sells a popular electronic device for toddlers called WePad. The following information is available about the item for the month of December 2021. So we have date, inventory received, inventory sold. So 2020, so December 1st, 15th, and 19th. Inventory received is purchases. So 60 units at 20 each, and 40 units at 22 each. And inventory sold, 75 units at $60 each. Now let's scroll down and take a look at what they want us to do. So it says, use the FIFO method, first in, first out method of inventory valuation to complete the inventory card below. So if you need to go through how to do stock valuation, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below to my stock valuation video. So be sure to check that out if you need to do. Now we have WePad inventory card dates so the dates are across here now i'm seeing a bit of a discrepancy it says december 29th here but i feel they mean the mean 19th all right because that was the date that they gave us back up in the the information above so inventory in that's the purchases so we have number of units and the cost price and we have inventory out that's the sales and again number of units and well selling price and then we have unsold inventory so whatever remains at the end of each day number of units and cost price, and then the value of inventory. So let's go back up to the table with the information and start populating the solution. Okay, so I've recreated the information across here, the table. So the first thing we're gonna put in is the inventory received on December the 1st, 60 units at 20 each. All right, so we're gonna put that across here. Inventory in, number of units, 60, cost price is 20, and we're also gonna replicate that information across here in the unsold inventory or balance at end 60 units at 20 each giving us a value of 1200 now on the 15th we bought 40 more units at 22 dollars each so we're going to fill that information in here as well 40 at 22 now we are actually going to bring it across here and populate this last set of columns here so the 60 at 20 from the december the first is brought down and the 40 at 22 that we just bought is also included now in our unsold inventory or closing inventory. So in all, we have 100 units, 60 plus 40, at a total value of 20, 2,000, sorry, and $80, which is the 1,200 plus 880. Now for the final item, 75 units at 60 each as inventory sold. So that's actually going to go in the, in the middle here, right? So let's take a look and see where that goes. That's right there, 75 at 60. Now, under 5-4, which means first in, first out, we sell from the earlier batch first and come down. Now, if we have 100 units and we sold 75, it simply means we have 25 units left. And if the first batch of inventory is sold first, it means that what is left must come from the last batch. So what we're going to have here for unsold inventory is 25 units at $22 each for a total value for closing inventory of 550. Okay guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question five from the Jan 2022 PUA paper two. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. If you wanna check out any more videos, I'm gonna put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website for some free PUA handouts you might find useful. Again, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.